Hi, I'm Betsy LeBeau, and I'm your host on Not In Our Town. Not In Our Town is a new series focusing on changes <clears throat> that are taking place all around America in cities small and large. And these changes are occurring, really it could be next door, right across the street, um, but they're hidden in plain sight. Today, uh, we're talking to Richard Sands, who is a PI, and it stands for Professional Investigator, which I thought was Private Investigator. Maybe you can talk to some of those changes that have even taken place in the name. Right. Uh, actually, I'm a retired PI. You're a retired, that's right. Right. And uh, a few years ago, the state of Michigan decided uh, with the uh, private investigators to change the name to professional investigators because of the fact that uh, being a PI, a private investigator with the uh, connotations or the TV shows and so on sort of gave it a negative image and so we changed I it. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. Well, Richard, tell us about your, your background and maybe a little bit about, about your education, um, where you're from. I, uh, I finished my undergrad at uh, Madonna University mm -hmm. in 2002 uh, in criminal justice and uh, free law. I'm from the uh, Wayne County metro area. Right. And uh, after I completed my undergrad, I went to work for a number of attorneys as a private investigator. And I've been doing that up until last year when I retired. Okay. And you started out a little bit differently than that, too, because you were a journeyman, an electrician. Right. At Ford Motor Company, uh, I was a uh, journeyman uh, electrical electronics technician for about 15 years. And uh, during that time, I used all of uh, Ford Motor Company's uh, educational benefit packages and continued my education in noble arts. Oh wow, that's wonderful. So you are from Michigan. Yes. You're a native of Michigan. Correct. And you have family, children? Yes. Uh, I've been married for 32 years. Wow. And uh, I have eight children, uh, 17 grandchildren and two great grandchildren. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. Well, so you've been married for 32 years and you met your wife how? Uh, actually, uh, uh, over the phone. Over the phone. I, it was a, a, a wrong, wrong uh, number. You're kidding. No, no, that's actually how we met. Wow. Yeah. Well, that was a that was a, a God intended moment then. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. Um, I know um, you're involved with human trafficking. Yes. And uh, can you tell everybody how you got involved in that? I know it's a an issue now that is it, it's all across America. It's all over the the country and, and internationally. Correct. Just within the last couple of years, it's mm -hmm. developed now to where you're seeing it in the news quite a bit. And uh, there's a lot of legislation going on around the country. Uh, back in 2007, I lost my granddaughter to a, uh, a human trafficking case in the Down River area through oh. a strip club that uh, hired her. And they knew she was 17 years of age. And a couple of the patrons, customers at the club, took her down the street and uh, gave her narcotics that caused her death. Oh. That's, that's an un, unbelievably sad situation. And interestingly enough, though, you were already involved in this type of work, right. correct? Yes. Did this further your, your involvement or did... Absolutely. Yes. Uh, the first case that I had was back in 2001. Mm -hmm. uh, it was out of Dearborn. It was a double homicide of two four-and-a-half-year-old twin boys. Oh. And uh, their mom had worked in a club and, and uh, she was convicted of uh, killing the two twins. Oh. And what caused the, the, the killing? Do they know? Uh, there was a lot of issues. She was involved in narcotics mm -hmm. and, a, and a number of different things. And, and you know, just a, So this issue is um, not new to no. the area. This has been going on for a while. And human trafficking has been in the, in the media recently, more recently than, um, than I remember it being in the media 10 years ago. Has it changed or is it just more now in the media? What, what, what's occurred is that because a lot of us involved and engaged in the awareness. Mm -hmm. uh, I work for an organization under the uh, Health and Human Services uh, Division, Rescue and Restore Coalitions. Oh, yeah. And we're promoting awareness around the country. And, it, and more and more that the local governments understand what trafficking is, they're able to recognize and uh, prosecute some of these cases. So do you think it really became more apparent to the government 10 years ago, 15 years ago? When do you see the turning point? When have you seen the turning point? 
Uh, in 2000, the year 2000, uh, was the first human trafficking victims uh, protection uh, bill that was passed. And since it's been evolving down through the years. So year 2000? Is that yes. what you said? Yes. Yeah, that was just 13 years ago. That's correct. So it probably took some while for the legislation for people to even hear or realize that it was a true issue. Exactly. In my granddaughter's case, as a matter of fact, uh, we prosecuted the, uh, the drug dealer under a Michigan law that was passed in 2006 along with the human trafficking law in 2006. And the courts had no idea or clue. We actually had to try to help educate the judge and the prosecutor and, and so on. Wow. And we so this it. is just, it is new. I mean, it's, that's, yes, that's it just is. seven years ago. Correct. So um, I know it is a growing issue. Has it stopped growing because of the awareness, do you think? Or do you think it's continuing to grow? Do you think they're bringing people? Kind of help us to see the picture of what it looks like right now in the U.S. It's continued to grow mm -hmm. because the more the, the general public and, and uh, service providers are aware of the human trafficking. You can still to this day talk to your friends and neighbors and they have no clue what, what human trafficking right. is. They believe that it happens in other countries, which is part of the reason why our awareness program tries to uh, bring awareness about this happening right in our own backyard. Right. Should people be fearful of this happening to their own children? Does it happen? Are there, are there hot spots or is it just blanketed? I mean, is it everywhere? It's everywhere. It's everywhere. But I don't think that a person should be in fear mm -hmm. uh, for their children. I think that what they should do is educate their children. And that's it's what just like the old program called Stranger Danger. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, this has just evolved into something else. Right, you know, and the, the stranger traffic. danger is, is leading to other things that Correct. they need to be aware of. Absolutely. And there are high schools that I know in the area that have had kids that have been taken for this kind of thing. Absolutely. Right. Why not uh, high school? Down River was where my granddaughter was due to graduate in 2007. Right. And there's a Groves um, individual out there speaking too. Yes. I know. Right. And... What are some of the other statistics? Um, do you have statistics off the top of your head on how many women are involved in this area? How many are women nationally, internationally? There's a lot of statistics. It's not just women. No, that's correct. It's right. men and boys and right. little girls, mm -hmm. babies, mm -hmm. you know. Um, there's statistics all over. And one of the problems is, is, is this group will come out with a statistic, and that group, it's a general understood that there's 27 million around the globe. That's just amazing. There's a lot so of statistics sad. in the, uh, the TIP report. The U.S. Department of uh, uh, State uh, provides a, uh, what's called a trafficking in persons report every year. Uh -huh. And there are statistics for all of the different, I think, 188 countries or something like that, including the United States. And there's a lot of information in it. There's other organizations uh, called uh, the Polaris Project. Okay. There's a lot of organizations, yes, and they're there starting are. to collaborate. That's correct. Right. So they're coming up grassroots. And yes. Then, right. Absolutely. Um, some of those organizations, they have statistics as well for each one of the states, and then there's a grading system that they use. They monitor how our legislation moves forward. Mm -hmm. Actually, a, a, as we speak, Michigan is still a, at a low grade of an F. Oh, gosh. We've, we've actually failed in the uh, human trafficking. Well, that's really sad. Right. And why do you think that is? Awareness, once again. Uh -huh. Legislators. So education. Absolutely. The uh -huh. legislators need education, the, the, uh, the courts, the local police departments, and we're, we're trying to move forward on that. Mm -hmm. And how can we change that? Just the lobbying of it or just pushing with more people involved in talking to community? I mean, is it awareness to the right people? What is it? Exactly. It's uh -huh. awareness to the community. The community, in turn, questions their legislator, mm -hmm. or, or there are a lot of petitions that we have available. The International Justice Mission right now has a number of petitions through all the states, all, all 50 states, uh, for what's called the um, safe harbor laws for children. Oh, right. So when they're stopped or they're found to be engaged in some illegal activity as prostitution or that type of thing, that um, they're provided as a victim because anybody under 18 years of age is automatically under the federal law a victim of uh, human trafficking. So I know there are pulse points, um, so to speak, for this industry. 
Does it tend to be border states, border countries, you know, like maybe Canada, United States, Toledo, I've, I've heard maybe because there's so many, I mean, I don't know if this is true, right. but is that is that happening? That is happening. Mm -hmm. they, they do bring people in from other countries. However, uh, all of the border states have, have an issue uh, with that, trying to traffic people into the country. But where I would stress is that the trafficking is going on all across the country. Okay. People are transported from one state to another uh, for, for the sex industry. A lot of your uh, adult entertainment uh, organizations, clubs, uh, strip clubs and that type of thing, uh, they have what's called circuits. Mm -hmm. And these girls will go from one club to another and across state lines and, and so on. Okay. That makes sense. I mean, it does. The, so right. really, the pulse points, too, are the clubs and maybe the people that run those clubs. Correct. It, did it originate with those kinds of people, people that are making money on pornography? Did it originate from people internationally in foreign countries that are bringing girls in that are just trying to figure out how it really yeah. originated? I, can, I can't say that it originated there. This mm -hmm. has been going on for such a long time. Okay. Uh, people will traffic uh, the women and girls, even men. Mm-hmm. Uh, for sexual purposes, uh, prostitution, and, and that's been going on for, for a very long time. Mm -hmm. But what happens is uh, working in the clubs and mm -hmm. the strip clubs and that type of thing, a lot of those girls are very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them are doing uh, illegal drugs, narcotics, that's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. And uh, once again, we're back to this. If you need the drugs or want the drugs, you'll do what I tell what you I to tell do. you to do. That's right. Well, I know a lot of people listening to this, their minds probably go back to the movie Taken and Taken Two. Right. Is that part of this too, or is that Absolutely. something a little okay? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and not only does that occur in other countries in in, in the movie Taken, mm -hmm. but that occurs right here locally. Uh, a girl may go to college uh, on the other side of the state. In a situation, a pimp picks her up in the colleges. Uh, the girls are very vulnerable in the in the schools, mm -hmm. in, in the colleges, mm -hmm. and, and type of thing. They're away from home, and they're they right. Have no, yeah, and they're afraid to to come out of it. I know um, that sometimes the girls actually still live at home while they're right. involved. That's correct. And maybe, like, how what is the percentage of that? And how would you know if your daughter or son was involved in something like this? Well, uh, one of the one of the indicators is, is their their behavioral changes. Mm -hmm. You'll notice maybe the moodiness, and that also leads to possible narcotics right, abuse. Right, right. But um, there's a, a a young lady by the name of Teresa Flores mm -hmm. at, right here in Michigan. She had a similar situation. She lived at home, went to school. Her parents never had a clue, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, she actually travels nationally. Uh, to uh, speak, and, and I think people are familiar with her. Right, uh -huh. very good. Yeah. Well, um, I know that when you talk about these nightclubs and that kind of thing, um, you know, some people's areas don't have, they're more prevalent maybe in, in some parts of town than other parts of town. Correct. I know that they also are hooked into the uh, media or the internet. How does the internet become involved in this? Or I know it's a strong presence on the internet as well. Right, as far as the prostitution yes, is concerned. Yes, right. Do they use yeah, that in absolutely. marketing? And how is that absolutely. done? Is that just through pop-ups or? Uh, there's a number of sites out uh -huh. there available that you can go to and find different uh, adult entertainment clubs across the country in any city, any state. There's quite a few, and then they'll advertise on those. Okay. Yeah. So it <clears throat> mainly comes from these clubs, do you think? I'm not sure I the, understand. The, the, uh, the internet, you know, soliciting. Uh, or is it from individuals? Come, no, it's from individuals. It's from individuals. Yes, okay. absolutely. I wasn't sure of the question. No, but. yeah. Well, it, I, I was just thinking of the connection and how broad it is mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the fact that it's done through um, individuals and these entertainment clubs and then put on the internet. And I mm -hmm. wondered how it all worked together. Yeah, I don't... And people uh, that maybe are, are connected that way and maybe move across the country yeah. or... Uh, if I understand the question correctly, uh, the Internet with their, like, um, uh, porn... Right. Okay. I don't know that they're connected with the club okay. per se because you don't want that kind of a right, connection. Right, right. Okay. Uh, I don't know... But, but human trafficking, is it done through the Internet? Yes. Okay. The human trafficking is done through the Internet with a lot of... Uh, 
uh, like Backpage and uh, some of those organizations. They're, they're big news organizations. Okay. So the government, um, what have they done to stop this? I know we talked about legislation, but right. nationally, maybe after um, you said in 2000 there was some legislation that was passed and then you helped to pass some in the state in 2006. Right. Is there anything else they're doing or, or some of your groups that are collaborating right now to work on this? I know you mentioned some of the... There's, there's quite a few of us uh, yeah. that are working together to try to pass new legislation in each, each one of the states and at the federal level. And, and it all has to do with the education Which funding. Is education. Right. It's awareness, education, that type of thing for colleges, universities, mm -hmm. uh, local authorities, uh, the courts, the uh, law enforcement, and that type of thing. Because otherwise, if you don't have, if you don't have the training, you really, you, you're looking past everything. It's, and that's why they call it hidden beneath the surface, because mm -hmm. people don't recognize mm -hmm. it. So what can we do to be involved as individuals? Should we sure. be trained? Absolutely. Uh -huh. I, I would recommend that uh, when, when someone learns of uh, that this is going on, to get a hold of, uh, and through the internet, mm -hmm. uh, the Pol Polaris Project mm -hmm. or... Uh, uh, the Salvation Army has a, a wonderful oh, program. Oh, it does? Absolutely. Salvation Army does everything. So the Polaris Project, Salvation Army, and I've heard of a lot of other organizations that are starting. I know there's Monarch Wings that are starting right. a shelter house, and these things are starting to pop up everywhere. Yes. Are, they, are, are groups like this all meeting together? Yes, we are. That's very good. We just had a meeting uh, June 10th with uh, 20... Seven, twenty-eight other organizations here in Southwest Michigan, or Southeast Michigan. Sorry. And how many are there? Uh, there's, there's hundreds of them. There's starting, hundreds of yes, them. Yes, there are. They're That's all around the country. Wonderful. They're just starting to. to uh, are they faith-based or government-based or community-based? A all? lot of them are faith-based, mm -hmm. but there's individual organizations uh, through social service, through through education. Mm -hmm. Law enforcement, there's a number of different agencies and grassroots organizations mm -hmm. starting to develop. Uh, International Justice Mission has uh, uh, organizations all around the country. The uh, uh, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, oh, that's the, good. the uh, Administration for Children and Families, has a lot of uh, rescue and restore organizations around the, the states. So it's rescue, restoration, awareness. Correct. And it's done statewide and nationally. Correct. There's gatherings. What has been some of your opposition that you've experienced? Is there opposition to bringing this forward? There is. Uh, it's, it's an issue with uh, the legislation a lot of times trying to pass uh, the bills that sometimes require extra funding for education. Mm -hmm. um, and, and right now they're struggling with their budgets and, and so on. Uh, it, that's so one it's of more the biggest, budgetary. Uh, yes. And economics. That's, that's the, correct. The issues are. It's not that people are opposed to this or openly opposed right. to bringing this forward. But there are probably people involved in government that don't want to see these legislation, you know, issues show exactly. awareness. Right. And have you come across any of that, or is that just yes? Yes. Okay. And, and one of the reasons there would be. Uh, some of the uh, economic issues with the publishers over and through the internet because of the money that they raise doing this. Mm -hmm. they, they don't want to uh, see the legislation passed to restrict their, it's a, it, it's a um, First Amendment issue. Okay, with a lot freedom of, the, of speech. That's yeah. right. Uh -huh. Well, you know, and that, that's gonna be a hard one. There's been a lot of threatened issues recently with freedom of speech Correct. and with the internet especially. Yes. Um, I know people are now becoming aware. Are there key things they should be looking for in noticing if, if their child or other children or if they see, out in public and see someone acting suspiciously? Are there about three or four key things they should be looking for? And I know there's a hotline available that we'll give at the end of the show. Right. Well, one of the, the things that I would, I would recommend is the awareness and the training programs. Because to, to just arbitrarily point out there's a few things, what, what, what we're running into is I may say that if you notice someone's behavior, 
then all of a sudden that pops out at everybody and they I notice see. that particular yeah. behavior and immediately people are thinking, oh my God, they're trafficked. Right. That's not true. Right. You know, there, there's, there are definite signs that you look for, but it's only through the training. Okay, that you can That really, you can recognize. Okay. A absolutely. So you recommend that everybody go through a training. Absolutely. Right. And there's free training all over the internet. There's free okay. training. Okay, so you the, can do it on the internet. Yes, you can. So what are yes, some of the websites that have the free training? The Plurus Project, mm -hmm. the uh, Hope International. Uh, there's a lot of government sites okay. that have the free training. Um, there's uh, the blue campaign through uh, Department of uh, 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 Homeland Security, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a lot of training that's uh, that's coming up. Uh, the Salvation Army, as I said, there's a, it's an 87-page double-sided uh, PDF download that you can. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, everyone really appreciates your expertise. Not only are you educated in this, but you've had, you know, personal issues that have really probably furthered your desire right. to figure all this out. Um, and what have you come away with? What are your what are your goals and what is your what are you doing right now? Right now, I'm working on legislation here in the state of Michigan mm -hmm. with uh, a number of different organizations uh, trying to pass legislature here uh, with the safe harbor laws so that anyone under 18, if they're caught up in some kind of situation like this, they're not treated like a criminal. Right, okay. Versus... Uh, under that they're the, safe, yeah. That's right. Under the federal law, they're a victim. Okay. And uh, I'm working on a couple of other cases that we, we have ongoing currently uh, with trafficking uh, individuals and uh, in the clubs and so on. There's a club here in Detroit that they're trying to reopen the uh, All-Stars on 8 Mile. Okay. So I just yesterday filed a, a new petition at the federal level and at the state level with the legislatures to, to end that. Uh, if someone violates the uh, TVPA and hires someone underage, then, then we have a zero tolerance. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of like a watchdog. You want Correct. the watchdog there. Absolutely. And you're pushing for that. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. All right. Well, that's that's good. I mean, all those things are wonderful. Have you seen changes in the last few years in the in the, in the positive way? Absolutely. Since you've been involved. Absolutely. With with the amount of media coverage now, uh, MSNBC has series on the the trafficking. Yes. Just about every other weekend. Right. On a Sunday night and. Oh, other, it's on a Sunday night. Right. I've seen. Okay, MSNBC. Okay. Right. And. Uh, there's a lot of new organizations starting now to have dialogue and conversations about the human trafficking. What can we do? How can we help? There is a lot of faith-based organizations. And it wasn't until after uh, President Obama and uh, uh, President Clinton last year was talking about how the faith-based organizations ought to be involved. Right. They're our first, uh, uh, first defense. The faith-based organizations. Absolutely. And it just seems that they're, it's powerful. Yes. I mean, even the small groups and churches that are coming together. Correct. Yeah. And I know some of, the, and I know you have many stories probably of, of different organizations, you know, following through with, you know, great results. But there are some organizations going actually over to buy girls. And I don't know if you knew about that. I've heard of that. And there are also organizations just coming together to pray and then to educate, like right. you like you were saying. One of the... Uh, uh, faith-based organizations that I do work with. Um, I believe what you're, you're talking about is where they will go and buy out of the brothel. Exactly, and then, and then set them free. That's correct. Uh -huh. that, that's correct. I've been involved in that a little bit, That's too. just amazing. It is. Indeed it is. And is that a difficult situation? Is, that, is it working? It is working. Uh -huh. It is working. Uh, one of the issues there is is once that they're set free, if they have no follow through or follow up um, assistance, mm -hmm. a lot of times they're right back into the uh, the brothel again, picked up again. Uh, that's just sad. It is. Yeah. Well, they don't know another way, and maybe exactly. they're involved with drugs, and they don't know how to keep that going. Exactly. So that's why these safe houses are probably a good idea. Yes. Right. And many of the women do have families that are looking for them. And are, is, is a large part of that maybe some of the missing persons? Yes, it is. 
Yes, it is. And that's where they're located and they can't find these people. That's right. That's mm -hmm. one of the reasons uh, a lot of us uh, that are working together in these organizations are constantly publishing some of the missing children and some of the news stories about the traffickers and about cases going on around the country through blogs and Facebook and Twitter and, and Google and, that's wonderful. and LinkedIn and so on. Yeah. That's, like the internet that, is a bad thing and a good thing at the correct. same time. You know, it's, exactly. it's very useful in, in recovering. Exactly. And your title is in restoring, which I always love to see and hear, is that you're really about restoring that's you know, correct. women, restoring the communities. You know, that's just a wonderful vision. Can you tell us maybe some more of what your vision is about, your goals for the future? I, I've been, you mentioned a few, but... Yeah, I've been taking a little bit of uh, additional training uh, in education. I'm just finishing up my master's degree in social justice. And uh, there's another program that I'm involved in, uh, restorative practices. Mm. And here is where what exactly what we're doing, and that is my vision to restore people to where we are a community once again and where we do care about each other again. And I think that one of the reasons why this has gotten so out of hand and it is because people just sort of lost sight of their community. Mm -hmm. And do you think it's because people are so transient now? Or they're not as community oriented as in the past? Or People will go to where they can find work. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the problem. When families have left the community to mm -hmm. find work, that um, it's caused to say, and you don't know who your, your new neighbors are. Mm -hmm. And most people, in the past have decided not to get involved mm -hmm. and we're trying to restore that where where we do have a community that we all care about each other again mm -hmm. and that's good and there are probably many ways you can go about doing that you know in restoring community it's probably about meeting together working together on projects exactly right what are some of the ways we, we've had a number of conferences, uh -huh. two or three day conferences, where we have workshops and that type of thing where, where people can learn. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we have um, events where we'll set up our information and what we're trying to do is provide awareness, little pamphlets mm -hmm. and flyers and posters and, and we'll do lectures and that type of thing. And as we, we're wrapping the show up, and um, Richard, and we've really enjoyed having you. You're a, just a, a, a wonderful man to be doing this and then to really dedicating your life. Is there something you'd like to share just on wrapping up a story? or? I would like to see that, uh, that everyone that does have an opportunity to view this, uh, to be able to share the information, to look a little deeper, look beneath the surface. Mm -hmm. and uh, find out what there is out there to, uh, to see and to learn and to understand how you can help. Mm -hmm. And you'd recommend probably everyone getting and, involved in the education portion of it. Yes. Will the local high schools and the public high schools have this going on, do you think? There are programs that uh -huh. are starting around the country. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is just within the last couple of years. This is developing in, in, in the, the high schools in the colleges and universities. And it's just, we're, we're at the grassroots level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And it's I, a blessing, it, it truly is. It's a blessing, well it's a blessing to have you on the show. And if it is located in the high schools, that'd be a good place for the communities to come around to okay. hear about it. But you did mention that Salvation Army, the Polaris Project, and some of the other government initiatives with Blue, what did you say it was? Blue Campaign. Blue Campaign may have this online, so you right. can you know download it. Is it a long? Um, education process online? Is it quick? Some of them are. Some of them uh, you can take within a few hours. Okay. So it is a class almost. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. All right. This is Betsy LeBeau, and thank you for joining us on Not In Our Town. Um, there are many changes taking place in our communities that we're not aware of, and we're becoming aware of them. And so we appreciate your um, participation in watching our show, and thank you for joining us with, um, with Richard Sands. And we'll see you again.